ChatGPT, can you create a marry me beef recipe similar to the popular marry me chicken recipe that is so trendy? Of course, the marry me chicken recipe is known for its creamy, flavorful sauce with sun-dried tomatoes and fresh herbs. We can create a marry me beef recipe that captures a similar essence but is tailored for beef. Here is my proposal for marry me beef. Everyone, thank you so much for checking out this video of Marry Me Steak. This recipe turns out absolutely incredible. You're gonna have to cook it. Just wanna let you know the first three or four minutes, my mic is not great. I forgot to turn on my main microphone, but the sound starts sounding much better after that three or four minute mark. So bear with me, this recipe's totally worth it. I had a thought. I typed it into ChatGPT. I said, hey, Marry Me Chicken is the bomb. Well, not in those words, but it's amazing. Uh, can you make a beef version? Instead of Marry Me Chicken, can we make Marry Me Beef? That sounds awesome. Let's see what ChatGPT came up with because of course, it did deliver. So let's try it and see if it's disgusting, because it could be. So the first thing ChatGPT did was give us a list of ingredients. And in those ingredients is two beef steaks. I got ribeyes. These things are huge. I'm like a little concerned about how huge they are. They're uh, this is a two pound steak. This one is a one and a half pound steak. So they're pretty huge. I don't know, do I? I'm tempted to only cook one of them because honestly it would probably go to waste if I cooked two of them because my kids don't really like steak. So it'll just be me and my wife and this is enough for both of us and this was expensive. So I might save this for a future night. Because it's marry me beef, I don't think having less steak will really negatively impact the meal at all. I am kind of losing my voice. So if my voice sounds a little weird, that's probably why. So our first step ChatGPT gave us is to take this steak, it's a huge steak, and salt and pepper it on both sides. I do like to use coarse salt when I'm seasoning beef. I don't know if that's really the right thing to do, but that's what I'm gonna do. And I don't know if you knew this, but the real thing, one of the main things that inspired this is I have some videos on my channel of how to make Mary Me Chicken. Two of them actually. And both of them are absolutely amazing recipes. And since I've made those recipes, I've probably recooked them 30 times because they're just that good. Is this too much? I don't know. Uh, so, you know, if I can find a similarly amazing recipe, but it's unique, how cool would that be? Mary Me Beef. We could like, make history guys we could literally be the proud creators of the best recipe ever and what do you do like what's after marriage right ultra marry me mega marry me this beef might be the ticket and honestly if there was someone trying to cook for me to make me want to marry him beef would be the way to my heart not chicken just saying but this is weird because chat gpt has really kind of made it similar in a way like where the chicken, I don't know, the chicken goes so well with the cream sauce, how's beef gonna go with it? We're gonna let that rest for a minute just to let the salt get in it. So I don't think you're supposed to do that. Uh, from all the steak preparation videos I've watched in the past, what I think you're supposed to do is either salt it right before you cook it, like the second before you cook it, or salt it like an hour before. I think those are the two things you're supposed to do. So before you go writing, Dave, you're doing the steak wrong. Understand I know, I didn't think this through. And I didn't realize that I was gonna have to go back to the stove immediately, which is what that wants me to do. It wants me to go back to the stove and uh, garlic is gross, throwing it out. All right, here we go, this is the better piece. Because I didn't, I didn't think about the fact that I haven't prepped any of the other ingredients. Like I need some garlic cloves, what else do I need? Probably not that much, I think it's just a garlic clove. So we'll get it cooking pretty fast here. <laughs> I'm supposed to chop up thyme leaves and rosemary and garlic cloves. And it calls for four cloves of garlic, but, I, I did my order with Instacart, and I got the order in. It didn't have rosemary or thyme in it, uh, but luckily ChatGPT said you can use fresh thyme and rosemary or dried thyme and rosemary, and I do already have dried rosemary and dried thyme. Did I cut my finger just now? I did. How did I do that? When I edit this, I'm gonna have to watch back the footage and figure out what in the world I cut my finger on. Did I cut it on a piece of garlic? Would that even be possible? I must have cut it on the side of the knife. I don't know. I don't know what happened there. Anyway, so this is like the main prep work, just to mince a little bit of garlic. And then we'll head over to the stove and start cooking this thing. There's gonna be some measuring we have to do, but it should all be simple to do on the fly. So we got our garlic ready. Like I said, I didn't realize most of this was gonna be over there. So we're gonna move our cameras around a little bit, head over there and get cooking. Okay, so in the interest of making my life a little easier, I think I'm gonna cut this one big steak in half. I think it'll be easier to manage, just like uh, horizontally. Just to make my life a little bit easier when I'm actually handling it. I mean, it's so big, it could basically be two steaks in and of itself. So now I've got two steaks this side. It looks like just two folded steaks. They're super thick. The thickness has me a little concerned. It might cause problems, I'll be honest. 
I'm heating up my pan to medium high. We're gonna sear the steaks. The next step would be to, if you haven't already, chop your sun-dried tomatoes. Now I bought the julienne cut ones, they're already chopped up, so I didn't have to cut them up, but in the past I bought the whole ones and cut them manually. Uh, so it's really your choice. You're gonna need a half cup of these pretty soon. So just so you're ahead of the game, if you have ones that are whole, it's time to chop them up before we really get going. Oh, additional note, I have some grated Parmesan cheese, fresh, it was fresh Parmesan that I grated myself. I had grated it for a video I just did, I just finished. It was a TikTok spaghetti, which check that out, that actually came out delicious, so you gotta go check that one. But I had this, you can see me grate this cheese in that video, but I was like, I'm just gonna grate enough for this recipe, because this recipe only needs a quarter cup of fresh grated Parmesan. So make sure you've got fresh grated Parmesan as well. You're also gonna want some heavy cream on standby, some beef broth, and I think that's mostly it, but we'll figure it out. All right, so my pan's feeling pretty hot. We wanna sear the beef. Where's the beef? <laughs> you remember that? Was that Betty White? Where's the beef? For about three to four minutes on each side. So I'm gonna throw them on here. Hopefully we get a sizzle. Actually, wait, does it say olive oil? In a large skillet heat olive, yeah, let me put some olive oil in there. Almost forgot the olive oil, the lubrication for said beef. Move that around here. Now, well, maybe I should let the oil heat up a second. And this is the moment I realized my microphone had been off that whole time. Hopefully you can still hear me in this camera and this camera well enough to be okay. But basically where we're at is we're about to sear these two halves of steaks. Basically looks like two full on steaks for two to three minutes on each side. And the audio just got magically better. So thank you for bearing with me. All right, so we're just gonna let that sear up. Like I said, two to three minutes. So while that's searing, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out my beef broth and my heavy cream. We want a cup of beef broth, which I guess I can come do this over here. One cup of this. And we need a half cup of heavy cream, but I swear all my other liquid measuring cups are in the wash right now, so I might just use a dry one. I only have this giant one. Does this do half a cup? It doesn't do half a cup. I guess what I could do, is that a cup? Yeah. Let's pour this in here. Beautiful and then put the half cup of heavy cream in here. Wait, will that interact? Let me wash this first. All right, half a cup of the heavy cream, like so. Now we got our cream and beef broth ready to go as well. Now I'm gonna take a look at these steaks. Now they're looking a little seared. I feel like the heat needs to be a little higher to get a better sear. So I'm gonna turn it up a little. It's a little, a little crispy. Let those keep going and let's see what else we need to prep, if anything. Yeah, the thyme and rosemary. If you are cutting it fresh, you need a teaspoon of both. I'm gonna sear the sides too. It's got a nice sear on it as best I can. I'm always bad at this because they like to fall over. But the goal would be to get some sear on the edges. This is gonna be a serious sear. <laughs> not really, I'm not great at searing stuff. But hopefully it comes out good. You know what, I'm gonna switch out the uh, foil on my pan because I had the raw beef on it and I'm gonna put this beef back on that pan with some fresh foil. Let me just flip this over. There we go, nice little sear on the edge there. My fire alarm is about to go off, just watch. It always goes off when I sear beef. All right, I think we're probably good to go on the sear. Yeah, that looks nice. Set that on our nice fresh thing. We're not cooking it through here, we're just searing it. Heat should be at medium. I, I turned it up a little higher to sear it, but I just turned it back down to medium and we're putting our garlic into the pan. Same pan that we used for the beef and we didn't clean it off or anything. So we're gonna start to just let that come, become fragrant. Try another 20 seconds or so. This seems like it's gonna be a really easy recipe. Do we call it marry me beef or marry me steak? I think we call it marry me steak. That's really what it is. You know, you'd call it marry me beef if it was like some weak beef, but it's a good beef. Right, we're gonna add our one half cup of sun-dried tomatoes that you already chopped up. It's got a little bit of the oil in it too, that's okay. And we're gonna simmer that for a little bit. It says to simmer this for one minute. Yeah, stir in for another minute. So really quick on this one. Don't wanna burn my garlic, that's my concern at the moment. I know garlic can burn pretty fast. I'm pretty excited about this recipe. It might be really good. Okay, so it's been about a minute since we put in these uh, sun-dried tomatoes. We're now gonna add the beef broth. And you'll recall I said one cup of beef broth goes in. Once that beef broth is in, use your wooden spoon to scrape up any brown bits at the bottom, it says. That's all extra flavor. At least that's what the pro cooks tell me. And I trust them, I think they know what they're talking about. So the wooden spoon, get all that yumminess up, stir it up, and let's see what it says next. It says simmer for two to three minutes. So we're just gonna wait another two to three minutes. I'm excited about this. Have I said that? I think I've said that. I mean, how could I not be? Marry Me Chicken is so good. If this is like better than Marry Me Chicken, I don't know what to do. I don't, life will be crazy. 
It can't be better though. I mean, I think it's also a mood thing, right? Sometimes you're in the mood for steak and sometimes you're in the mood for chicken. It's been about three minutes. And the next step is to lower the heat to low. So like way down, bring it way down. I'm bringing it down to like number two on my oven. Stir in the heavy cream, which is, it's really not much heavy cream. Is that really a half a cup? Did I get that right? Yeah, half a cup of heavy cream. So reduce it to low, add in the heavy cream and the Parmesan cheese, which I forgot to measure. What did we say, a quarter cup of that? Yeah, quarter cup of Parmesan in there and then stir that all together like so. It's interesting because it's not beef broth that you use in the Marry Me Chicken. So that's a difference that ChatGPT decided to make. And I'm wondering if it's gonna pay off, if this is really gonna complement itself well, who knows. So cool, so fun. How fun is this, guys? Hit the thumbs up if you're liking this. If you enjoy this channel, subscribe. We're doing all types of fun experiments and, and just seeing what we can make, seeing what we can discover, seeing if we can improve upon things, create new things. That's what we do here. Not a pro cook, but lots of fun. What we're gonna do now is add the rosemary and thyme. Like I said, fresh would probably be better, but I couldn't get my hands on any. We're gonna use dried rosemary. One teaspoon of that goes in. Oh, I hope that doesn't ruin it. The not having fresh. I mean, ChatGPT said we could use either, so I think we're okay. And then a teaspoon of the thyme here. Oops, drop the lid. Thyme for some thyme. Which again, that's, I'm pretty sure both those ingredients are in the Marry Me Chicken. So it's definitely hitting the same flavor notes as the Marry Me Chicken. Smells good. Smells a lot like Marry Me Chicken, but with like a little beef overture. Hmm, oh, fancy. This is also the moment it says you can add a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. I'm not going to, because I really want my kids to eat it and they will flee from anything spicy. And my kids don't like steak, so my hope is that this will magically work for them somehow, magically work for them. Again, my biggest fear is the thickness of these steaks and how long it's gonna take to cook them through to like a medium well type temperature, like 135-ish would be my goal. Um, hopefully we can cook it in this little bit of sauce and it doesn't dry out or get gross or anything. All right, so it says to do three to four minutes till the sauce thickens. Uh, I don't know, has it thickened? A little bit, I think it's good enough. And then to put your steaks back in there, the previously seared steaks, the uh, PSS, we have to have an acronym for everything, right? Uh, put it into the sauce like so. These steaks are such monsters. And then put the sauce on top of it, some of the sauce on top of it, and then let it cook to desired doneness. Are we supposed to leave this on low heat though? That seems crazy. I might turn it up to like, maybe just below medium, just below medium, just to get it really cooking. Cause there's a lot of cooking to go on this steak. Uh, I do have a meat thermometer and it's currently stating that my meat is at 83 degrees. I need to add 50 degrees to this steak before I call it done. So there you go. The marry me steak is cooking. <laughs> I'm a little concerned that it won't ever finish, but let's see what happens. Let's give it 10 minutes. It says to give it three to four, but I know it's not gonna be done in three to four. All right, so it's been like three minutes. I'm gonna flip them over, cause why not? You know, maybe, maybe that'll help it cook on both sides. Let's see what it's at temperature wise. Let's see if any increase has happened. We're at 85, right? Oh, we're at 94, 92. It's going down, it's dropping. <laughs> I thought this like a little too late, but I think what I should have done, cause these steaks are taking up the whole pan. This was a ginormous steak. Uh, I think most of the steaks you're gonna get are gonna be a half of this thickness. This is like a over an inch, inch and a half thick steak. I could have sliced them horizontally then in half and just use half of one of the steaks probably for this whole recipe. But instead I've gone mega steak, which I guess will look cool for the picture. All right, I'm flipping this again. We're at about 110 degrees on this one. It's been eight minutes. So it is slowly cooking. I'd, I'd be tempted, and I do this with my Marry Me Chicken sometimes, but I'd be tempted if I was making this myself to slice it into small slices and have it just be slices of steak. I feel like that would be good too. But I will probably do that at the end when I go to eat it. I'll slice it, dip it in some sauce, and try it. And hopefully it's amazing. All right, let's check the temperature of this steak. It looks like we're at... Oh my gosh, 105. What about on this one? Hey, 127, this thinner one is close. I almost call that one done. Let's flip it again. Hey, you know what? At least it's getting a lot of the, the sauce kind of soaked in. Yeah, this little one I would almost call done. I wonder, should I take it out and put it back in? I think I might, guys. I don't want it to overcook. I'm just gonna set it on my tray here while we let this one finish up. This one's getting there. It's getting there. 120, yeah, maybe like three more minutes. By the way, it's been like, 12 minutes at this point. So definitely slice your steaks thinner than this if you wanna seriously make this. Here's what we're gonna do, cause I don't wanna let it go any further. Let's put this back in, make sure it's nice and warm, this other one. And put some stuff on top of it to really get that beautiful effect. 
I just don't know. I mean, the sauce has been in there for so long. I mean, it's definitely looking good, but that big one is still not done. As a matter of fact, it's not even really close to that. It's like 120. So I want to try this thing before the sauce gets inedible. And this one's already done, so I think we should try it. Marry me beef? All right, so let's just try it. I'm going to cut it. We can at least figure out if we're wasting our time, and I really shouldn't cut it in the pan, but I'm going to anyways, because I'm bad. Actually, let's cut it in the middle. Get a look, see if it even looks done at all. Yeah, that looks done. Medium rare. I was going for medium rare. I think we got medium rare. Oh, I'm dropping sun-dried tomatoes everywhere, but see the steak looks nicely cooked. So let's cut off a slice. We're gonna dip it in the sauce, maybe get a little sun-dried tomato in with it. We're gonna taste it and see if it's good. It's good. It's really good. There's no flesh left on the roof of my mouth. The fact that I didn't scream in agony shows you how delicious that was because it was so juicy and flavorful while at the same time scorching the, the roof of my mouth. Not my tongue, I put, for some reason it went to the roof of my mouth, which is good because that means my taste buds are still gonna work. It was hot, but it's insanely delicious. I think if you were to make this with a little thinner steak, it'd be much less stressful. This is a little stressful, but it is so juicy, like insanely juicy. Wow. This might be better than Mary Me Chicken. <laughs> like legit might be better. It's different though. This is like a very fancy steakhouse kind of thing uh, as opposed to, you know, Mary Me Chicken. I mean, this, I, I would say I do if, if this was the proposal dinner is all I'm saying. Let me try another piece, but I'm gonna let it cool a little bit so I can really appreciate it a little better because that kind of hurt. You know, I think the key, and this is what I do with my Mary Me Chicken too is I get a bunch of the extra sauce and I make sure that like each piece of chicken is just like drenched in the sauce. I think that adds so much deliciousness to it. You get a little sun-dried tomato on here. That's a lot of sun-dried tomato. Here we go. That looks good. So this is what we're gonna try here, this bite. Now I'm gonna let it cool for a second because that last bite was so hot it was a little hard to appreciate. Maybe we'll get Tina in here and that's my wife and see if she'll marry me. Does this do anything? Let's see, the other piece of steak is at 129, 130. Hey, they're done. They're both done, guys. So I'm taking it off the heat. All right, let's try bite number two. It's more telling. It's insane. It's insanely good. Wow. If you love the Mary Me Chicken, you've got to make this one. I gotta get Tina to try it. And this is like insanely good, even though I cooked the sauce way longer than it was requesting because I had such thick steak. So it might be even better if you could do a smaller steak and not cook the sauce as long, but it is so juicy and good. Let me get Tina. All right, so Tina is here. She doesn't want to be on camera because her hair is not done. She didn't did her hair yet, but she's going to try is it good? this. Tina, well, I'm asking you to marry me. It's marry me beef. So eat it and then tell me if you're going to marry me. Hot. <laughs> It is hot. I agree with that. I took that piece out for a bit too. I'm surprised it's still so hot. <laughs> Her eyes are watering because it's so hot. I thought I took it out and cooled it. Will you marry me? Oh, she's on one knee. She's proposing to me. Very good. Better than marry me chicken? Yes. Oh, she chicken. said yes. Better than marry me chicken, guys. You heard it from Tina. Ding, ding, ding. She didn't even cook it, so she's not biased. And she says this is better than Mary Me Chicken, better than the steak we made last night. We just made a plain yeah. steak with salt and pepper last night, and this is way better than that. So fantastic Mary Me Chicken recipe. ChatGPT has created something better than Mary Me Chicken. I'm gonna have to put that in the title or something, because this is that good. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe. We'll see you next time.